So I made a 12 and a half minute long video and uploaded it and it said it uploaded and then I deleted it and um, it turned out it was the it was the wrong clip. It was only 14 seconds of me testing my mic. And by the way, if this is fuzzy and staticky, um, that's why I'm trying to talk loud to talk over the ambient static. So please forgive that. Lex Talionis, which is an awesome name, by the way. For anybody who doesn't know, it's eye for an eye, tooth for tooth idea. It's the rule, the law of the talon um, in Roman uh, or in Latin, but it's the Roman idea of eye for an eye. Um, asks. Yeah, uh, and this is the thing. I make videos talking about um, how, um, you know, we're against proselytizing, but we're for evangelizing, right? That stupid quote that's always misattributed to St. Francis, you preach the gospel everywhere, and if necessary, use words, right? That kind of is sappy, but gets the idea across. But I, I, he presses it, and kind of adds the the question, but why did people convert to Christianity from, you know, how did they convert them? I, I never add that, so I actually appreciate that. All right. Um, what people kind of don't get, right, when, when I say, um, I, I remember at, at a meditation, um, a Zen meditation class, basically, I took. Um, basically in introducing you to Zen meditation. Practitioner is a, a nun, a Buddhist nun taught the class. Uh, and I was telling this white guy that had worked at Lucent Technology, um, well, in Buddhism, uh, everything is empty, right? Like he was asking about it, and I was, I had just taken Lucent, was like, in Buddhism, everything is empty, right? Um, and you wouldn't, the idea of not just observing going on, but you'd say, oh, there's great importance on this or that, or or having too much romantic love, or, oh, I, I love this person so much. You, kind of in Buddhism, you didn't have that. Um, it's not that... It, and he kept saying, well, in your opinion, your opinion. No. Uh, that it's just your friggin' Christian worldview projecting on itself. Again, Native Americans. The vast majority of Native... I mean, this is kind of a constant across the Americas before the white man came. Um, compassion, sympathy, weakness, and cowardice were the same thing. If you took compassion on somebody, you're cowardly and weak. Now, we see people... You know, that's why we can't ever make a movie accurately. We can't ever make a movie about the Romans accurately or basically anybody. Even, I mean, if we made a movie about uh, the, I mean, in all our movies, we have to have, even from Middle Ages, people saying, well, I don't, I oppose the church and I'm for, and I'm for progress and the sciences. Back then, these people saw this it's a, as the same thing. Oh, Christianity, that's the intelligent one. They we kind of have to have our heroes kind of be anti-religious uh, establishment of these. Which, no, nobody was back then. I mean, that, that was ridiculous. Or uh, Samurai with uh, Charles James Cavill's Samurai. So I just want to get that out of the way when talking about this and saying that our modern conception of the sins of the father should not be visited upon the son, Right? Now, people look at that and say, oh, well, that's a Bi verse from the Bible. Um, no, the Christians never practiced that. In fact, they rejected that idea. Wherever the Christians went, there was no your whole family getting killed or getting punished for what you did. In fact, let me just go over this real quick. Um, the Jews never practiced what the Israelites practiced. And the Israelites, did, first of all, Levitical law, Mosaic law is impossible to, to fulfill, even from reading it. But as soon as there was no tabernacle, when there was a temple, Many laws became, you couldn't practice them. When uh, the temple was torn down, the ark was stolen, and you had the temple being rebuilt under Zerubbabel and Habakkuk, even before Herod's temple. The vast majority now of Mosaic law, you could not practice. Many of the rites and rituals, you just couldn't do it. And how are you going to get forgiveness? This is why the rabbinical tradition sparked up uh, during the Maccabees, uh, when they were kind of fighting the Seleucids. Uh, a lot of the 
rabbinical schools popped up. It kind of first started in Babylon, but when they, they were in exile. But before Christianity even came on the scene, Judaism was not following rabbinical or Levitical law. Stoning people, they kind of brought that one back. But the thing is, the fact that the Jews had that, the Christians immediately, no, you can't stone people. No execution. Forgiveness for everybody. Like that, that kind of shit. Um, and they held on to, I mean, they were born in a Greco-Roman world. And they were a people of the book, a people of writing. So they were big on history, on linear history. They preserved, when they got into power, they preserved the works of the Greeks and the Romans, pagans and stuff like that. Because that was another thing of Christianity. But why was Christianity appealing to people? Why did people convert to it? Well, um... I had mentioned that Christianity had wiped out slavery three times in the last 2,000 years. Basically wiped it out from itself and tried to wipe it out in other parts of the world. Uh, in Celtic Ireland, in Christianized Ireland, as, as Ireland was becoming Christianized, each chieftain, each person had to, be, had to free their slaves. When they, they could keep them on as servants, but they had to free them. People say, well, in Paul, you have to... I'm, sa I'm saying how Christianity was applied in practice um, throughout first centuries and then on. You had to free your slaves. If you were a chieftain or a king that became Christian, you had to abolish slavery. And this enveloped Ireland within one generation. And then the Scots, who are from Northern Ireland, went over to modern-day Scotland, which is the Picts. The, the Scots today are not actually Scottish. They're Pictish people, which had been Scots-eyes. Scots Scots-eyes. Um, so they... The pagans, the Pict ones, saw... Oh, they have architecture, philosophy, because there's, I mean, read, uh, how can you understand Paul if you don't haven't read Euripides and Plato and stuff like that, um, which I would ask all the modern fundamentalist Christians. Um, yeah, so they kept a written account, they had taxes, um, they built roads, and it was this idea of serving people, serving the poor, so hospitals sprang up. Which is a weird idea to the pagans. The pagans thought this is madness. Why would you help a sick person just for helping them? That's crazy. And if you if you look at the criticisms that the pagans had, the pagan writers had of the Christians, they they were disgusted with these scum people. Why a man actually spent money to help a slave who wasn't worth that much? He bought the slave for this much, and he spent more money than he bought on him. That is awful. Marcus Aurelius had this guy who rose, who raised him from childhood, a slave that raised him from childhood and was completely loyal to him. And Marcus Aurelius thought it was good that he sold him, even though he sold him to a brutal master, when the guy was very old and dying. Or not dying, just very old, and he's going to die soon. That was proper in the pagan world. So there's Christian ideas of forgiving people, of not killing your children when they disobeyed you, of not having um, punishments visited upon the family, especially execution, death. And even when death penalty did come into Christian, uh, I, I don't even want to say Christian practice because it was, mo it was very late. Oh, and, and this is another thing. I just want to add. Well, they, they would always just hang or drown people. There was the idea of not killing people. But um, people don't realize throughout all of Christian history, this idea of secularism was always there. There was the secular rules and the church rules. They, they weren't blended. Um, people talk about a theocracy and stuff like that, but they really, I mean, a theocracy is strictly like Islam, where the ruler is the religious head of, of the, um, the ruler actually is the religious head, is the pope of all of Islam. Or the Pontifex Maximus is the Caesar. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but in Christianity, first, uh, all of the New Testament and the first three to four hundred years of Christianity, no, you couldn't take any position in the government and be a Christian. You couldn't judge over somebody. You couldn't send somebody to jail. If you were a judge, you positively have to release every single person. How the hell are you going to do that? And that's why the idea of just war, Augustine brought into Christianity from um, Augustus, from the emperor idea of Augustus is just war. The idea of ending slavery, of everybody being under one law, that was another Christian thing. One law for everyone, no caste system. Now, classes would grow up in various systems, but that was among the secular class, the secular world, the laity. Uh, if, even if you read stuff from the Middle Ages and Dark Ages, they'd condemn stuff like that. Um, the idea of having hospitals. Hospitals were Christian inventions. 
yeah, there were places to tend sick in, in various parts of the world, but the idea of constantly being devoted to helping the sick and the poor, that's abhorrent to the, a lot of the ancient pagans, even the very enlightened ones. This was very appealing. And then the idea when you convert to Christianity, all right, you stopped being a raider or whatever, you learned to farm, you put up roads, monuments, you had a history written about you. It brought in a lot of technology because the Christians didn't burn the works of the pagans. They preserved them. It was the, uh, they might have let buildings go into uh, disrepair, but it was the Muslims that just tried to destroy most of ancient Egypt. When they came in there, it was mostly intact. Um, and the idea of, oh, uh, Zoroastrianism, uh, ancient Roman ideas and Platonic ideas that were monotheistic, they saw, oh, that's a forerunner of ours. And just like Judaism, you know, talked about one God. And the thing is, where else did the Jews live besides in Christen Christendom? They couldn't live anywhere else. Christians allowed for pagans and Jews to live among them. And I, we didn't say, no, they killed the pagans. Not until around the time of the Crusades and even after when the heathen was the, 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 uh, the Muslim and they were seen as paganism. But, I mean, from the time Constantine had edict of toleration, that time until... Uh, when a persecution was tried to be inflicted on the Christians one more time, and Theodosius stopped it and said, nope, that's it, Fi finally we're officially Christian. It took about a hundred years for even anybody to become part of the government that was Christian. That's the weird thing. But this was very appealing to people, the idea of, I love my family, I'll forgive this person, or um, I'll help this person just out of the goodness of my heart. It, this is very appealing to people, and we have this ingrained in us today. And people say, oh, well, that's just, you can't say that's Christian or that's bigoted. Well, you're a friggin' ethnocentrist for thinking that, no, everybody thinks like that. That you're not totally saturated and Christianized from what happened the last um, 2,000 years in the civilization that was turned on to you. So it was very appealing. And the idea of these unnecessary deaths for these things, or human sacrifice, blood sport, these things were outlawed when the Christians got into power. No human sacrifice, no blood sport. Blood sport meaning, you know, gladiatorial games. People say, oh, in the first century, it's like they were superstars and they were barely ever killed. We know of them that weren't, but by the second and third century, it was poor anybody in there having fights to the death. And the idea of exposing children. Up until the time Christianity took over, they still exposed babies. Cannibalism. Shit like this. And the idea of compassion being a good thing and not just being for some deserved class, but the idea of compassion and gift being free, being without merit. I don't know you, you're a stranger, I'll have compassion for you. People say, well, some of those, ide those ideas existed in the ancient world among some writers. It wasn't universal. A universal law for everyone, one law for every man, no caste system, no slavery. Um, the, uh, and if you, I can do one about, well, then how did slavery come about in around 1492? Because we, because people adopted it from the Moors and from the black Africans. Um, that's how. But I'll make a video about that, about slavery. But these ideas were very appealing to people, not just to slaves and women. But there were even, even though many church fathers said you can't be part of the army, you can't serve with the army and be a Christian, there were many Christian men in the army, and the, the accounts of George and Theodore slaying dragons, it's probably an account of their martyrdom. We know of St. Moritz, who was martyred. Um, George was definitely martyred. Theodore was martyred. But, um, yeah, the idea of m monogamy, th these are very appealing to people. And the idea of reading, writing, um, love your neighbor, that kind of stuff, help out people, you're appealing to people. But they did come from Christianity. And I think people either just don't know that or think, oh, everybody thinks and acts like me and has the same morality as me. No, morality is not universal. I mean, watch watch, the, watch that miniseries Samurai. It's so ridiculous. Every, every movie that we make, we put in, we project our modern-day Western, um, what's it called, uh, likes and dislikes and sensibilities. If we actually made something historically accurate, we would 
either hate the people or just be feel totally alien from them, especially from a non-Christian society, which people say, oh, that's bigoted. Why? Because they weren't exactly like you? So it was very appealing to people, some of these things. Other people, I mean, uh, Attila the Hun, who believed in raiding and slaughtering and killing anybody he could. And there were whole societies that believed that. The Vikings and many Native Americans were just total raiding cultures. The strong shall survive. That was their rule. This was not appealing to them. So, Or uh, the Vikings um, would laugh at people who wouldn't kill children, who wouldn't kill babies, would mock them. We think that's horrible now. We think naturally you wouldn't kill a baby. Not in the ancient world. In the ancient world, especially the pagans, babies were terrible, were the least important. Did not, I mean, no, I mean, kill them first. That's how they thought. So, you kind of don't understand how appealing that is. Kind of like somebody coming from a harsh uh, Islam Islamist background where you kill anybody who even thinks differently, who are, it's very appealing. These people.